Hey guys, thanks for joining me. This is your Maya Sensei speaking. Today I'm going to cover the slide edge tool and all the functionalities that Maya has in terms of the sliding functionalities. So let's get started. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab one of these meshes just to kind of isolate it. Let's work on a small piece just to demonstrate how this tool works. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and activate the tool so we can go to mesh tools and then we can do slide edge. So it's going to ask you to drag a middle mouse button to, to slide it. So at the moment there's nothing selected so there's no point in actually dragging the middle mouse button. So what it requires of us to do is obviously have either a single edge or a row of edges selected that will then be manipulated or tweaked. So I've got a little chunk of edges selected. And then if we do the middle mouse button, uh, click and drag to left and right, this will try and slide this edge along the curvature of the mesh to try and maintain the volume as much as possible. So this is a great way if you have a certain shape that you want to maintain. And uh, if you were to use a normal manipulator tool to try and move it, you will break the plane angle or the transition of that smooth angle. And that's definitely something that we're trying to avoid. So that's the slide edge tool. Some functionalities worth mentioning in here is that it has some snapping points where we can actually toggle at which increments we would like to snap to between the edges on either sides of the selected components. So at the moment it is set to snap, which means as soon as I click and drag, it's gonna start finding certain increments to snap to, and that's how it maintains that curvature. If we turn on off snapping completely, we can then have a free slide along that profile which is also very handy. So if we increase or decrease the tolerance, it will then act to have more snapping functionalities or snapping areas along that profile or less depending on our settings over here. So it's really up to you to really go in and play with how many snapping points you would like. Let's say if you want to have a total of 10 along this to find and you can go ahead and start counting them one, two, three, four, five and then start doing that to other edges as well. So that's quite useful. Right, so let's talk about the mode settings. So in the mode settings, what we want to look at is the difference between these two options. So relative basically looks at all the components along a selected um, you know, edge or along a certain curvature and tries to maintain all the edges to main, uh, receive the same distance offset that they have in relative to their neighboring edges. So in other words, if I have this edge selected over here, it will try and respect the offset and the width that we have between this one and the opposite neighboring edge. But once we start adding multiple edges together, then it's starting to look at whether this edge is longer than the first one and then shoot that one slide a little bit further forward. So I've got another mesh that I want to demonstrate this that will make it uh, make this a little bit more sense. So what I'm going to do is just kind of go out here and turn off my isolation. And what I have here is just a simple polygon plane that kind of describes the, the effect that I'm trying to explain for you guys. So over here we can see that uh, we've got some straight edge loops on this side and then we have some of the edges that's extended quite far beyond um, on the right hand side and then over here we've got a really short edge length. And so when we do an edge loop like this and we leave that to relative, what the, the um, slide edge functionality will do is respect the distance from the initial profile up to that snapping point based on the tolerance. And then after that, what it's going to try and do now is compensate all the other edges to now receive that additional offset to try and average out the edge lengths. 
So this is very useful if you want to have the path, the edge loops to kind of follow the, the length of the model. However, if this is not the case, you want to have it act um, and always maintain that initial edge profile. It might be a better option for you to switch that to absolute. I'm just going to undo this just to quickly get my edge back again to the straight line. I want to set that to snap in point one. And so if I now do the middle mouse click and drag, it will try and force the edge to never go beyond the closest vertex uh, to that edge. And then the rest of the edges will not be compensated accordingly. It will always take the shortest edge length to maintain that. Now, for if there was for some reason a case where you wanted to have this extend beyond that edge length, what we can do is hold down control and then we can start dragging that beyond that edge profile. This functionality only works for relative. So if you click and drag, we get to a point where they're snapping. We can actually hold down control and we can push that edge a little bit further than that, that distance. So some things to, to take in consideration. Another nice thing that's worth mentioning is if you hold down shift, with this tool, it will actually push the edges along its face normals. And that's going to help a lot with capturing the curvature of something. And there's one or two other things that's really worth mentioning. So let's hide this guy. And we're gonna jump back to this one. I'm gonna isolate it once again. And what we have here is, uh, let's go back to the mesh tools, slide edge tool, make that active. Um, so the way that the slide edge tool works, it's, it's essentially constraining the edge to the face normals to basically slide that along that curvature. But now if we're doing some sort of a mesh manipulation where the object itself needs to consider maybe another object as a way of snapping to it. Um, or if you want to have the edge to, or rather the vertex or even the face to slide along that face normal, then what we can do is instead of using the actual slide edge tool, we can make use of the sliding functionalities that is within the move tool. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So again, any type of component you want to use, let's say vertex. Um, let's grab a few of these vertices over here, or even maybe somewhere over here that would make more sense to demonstrate this. So I'm going to jump to my move tool by pressing W. And then in the W, or rather the move tool settings, you can see there is a setting for um, transform constraints. So on the top of this menu, you have the option of setting it to edge or surface direction. So if you're doing this to an edge, what this will do is again, make use of the slide edge fun functionality, but then when we click and drag on the manipulator handle, it will respect the face normals. And you can obviously see my, my mouse cursor has a little slide attached to that. So that's going to allow us to slide those components along that surface normal angle. So that's very useful. Same thing goes for faces. We can go into face mode, select a face. I'm just going to hit F to frame on that. And then it's still set to slide based on edge. So it's going to allow those edges to slide along that profile, which is really, really useful in many different situations. So a quick way to have access to the transform constraint functionality is by holding down W. In fact, let's close the tool settings or the move tool settings. I'm gonna hold down W, left click and drag. And you'll see we've got a little short list of all the functionalities that is within the tool settings. And then we have selection constraints and then we can choose based on um, you know, angles, okay, that this, I'll talk about this in a different video. What we're looking at is the transform constraint. So there's edge slide, 
service slide and also turning it off to go back to the original way the tool functions and so this will also work with a bit of a soft select functionality so if we have a component selected and we turn on the soft selection by holding down b click and drag and increase the radius and then making sure we turn on edge sliding you can now see it's trying to move those components along that surface shape uh, depending on how much detail you have it will either maintain that or you might struggle a bit so i'm going to demonstrate that on a sphere just to quickly show you guys so i'm just going to create a polygon sphere drag it out i'm going to select a face over here Got to make sure we've got that transform constraint set to edge mode. Got to do a larger soft selection, and then when we slide this, you can actually see it will just move those polygons and try and maintain that surface angle. So there we have it. That's the basics of the slide edge and the sliding functionalities within Maya. I hope you guys liked the video. Please subscribe. If you, you have any comments, please leave them below. And make sure you click on that bell button so that you are notified as soon as there's a new video coming up. Great stuff. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.